Well, greetings, people of the internet. Unky Joe here, Unky Joe's Playhouse. Today, we're going to fix something that I didn't even know was broken. So what was broken that I didn't even know was broken? Well, thanks to uh, one of my uh, loyal subscribers, Sakura, um, we were playing around with uh, SSDs and NVMe drives the other day, and he was showing me around on some software to monitor, you know, hard drives and whatnot. And we noticed that the NVMe on my main rig was not running at full speed. And it turns out, after some discussion and, and some investigation, that I had indeed mounted this NVMe drive in the wrong slot. Uh, there were two onboard NVMe. This is a uh, Gigabyte B450 Aorus Pro Wi-Fi motherboard. So on this motherboard, they have a really long uh, slot on the uh, next to the video card, and then they have a shorter NVMe slot next to, I think it's PCI Express slot too. And that is where I had installed the NVMe drive. Partly because it was only an 80 uh, NVMe drive like this one. It's a short one. And that was a short slot. And of course, I didn't have a clear understanding of how those slots work. Um, and it's running at a slower speed indeed. So what I'm going to do is stop talking now and I'm going to take you over to the bench. And you're going to see what it is I'm talking about and how I rectified it. Not very often I have to take this thing apart. Thank goodness it's been such a good computer. It's very reliable. Now I'm hoping I'm going to be able to get in here and uh, I need to move. The first thing I think I'm going to need to do is Yeah, the goal today is, and you probably can't see it here very well until I turn some light on. There's my video card. It's an AMD. My RAM bank. So the goal today is, evidently I put the NVMe drive into the wrong um, slot on this motherboard, and I'm not getting the full speed of it. So Sakura pointed that out to me when we were playing around uh, in Discord one day. We were sharing drive speeds he was teaching me some uh, some stuff about how drive speeds you know how to see what your your transfer rates are and um, <clears throat> so uh, he discovered at that point that the transfer rate was slower uh, than it should be now I want to go ahead and take this I don't want to scratch up my case so I'm going to go ahead and take this side off as well. This is the Aorus B450 Aorus Pro Wi-Fi board. But I don't use the Wi-Fi on it. But I got the, the board three, two or three years ago for a really good price. So, Alright, so now I can lay this thing on its side. And then hopefully... The overhead cam will get us some will get us some shots. Yeah, and that's exactly what I've done. So what it's gonna require is I'm gonna have to it's not too dusty inside. My office is relatively clean. But let me show you what's going on here. Alright, so the deal is is I've got my NVMe drive right here. Okay, and it should be under the video card. I believe there's another slot for an NVMe. So what that means is, is I need to remove the video card from my PC. And again, I hope the overhead camera is getting this. Move it over here a little, little bit. So right here I have this little, like a vanity cover. There we go. There's no screw in it. And I'm going to go ahead and pull the power on my video card. 
and then we'll pull and there's a clip there it is It'll release that card and out she comes. So this is, oh, she's a little dusty. I don't know if you can see it now, but there's the NVMe as I currently have it installed. And it needs to go here by where the video card was. So that's what we're going to do next. So i got to be careful with this because don't want to lose these screws. And I also don't want to bar of my NVMe drive so take that screw out very carefully then the heat sink I'm going to put it in the longer slot and I'm not going to, here's what I'm going to do, I'm just going to not worry about that. Alright, hopefully I've got the disc or the M2 in there. Alright, well, lesson learned. All right, that should work. All right, let's put it back together and see if I can get this baby to boot back up. And I'm hoping this will take care of some of the issues I was having with video stuttering. The computer would run a while. And then the video in a browser window would start stuttering. I didn't know what it was. <clears throat> um, okay. Now suddenly this doesn't want to reach. What's, what's, okay, there we go. All right, there it goes. That's good. Uh. Oh. 
hopefully this thing won't get too hot. So let's get our side covers on. Don't get me wrong, uh, I love AMD processors, but um, yeah, next time uh, I think I'm going to buy Intel. And the reason is, is because I like the fact that Intel comes with onboard video. It just gives you more options, you know. I know, yeah, 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 I hear you. AMD does too. You can buy a chip with a built-in video, but QuickSync has got wider support, in my opinion, my way of thinking, than than AMD does. Um, and a lot of programs like Plex and MB and whatnot, they take advantage of of Intel QuickSync technology, so it can just make your life a whole lot easier. Now. One of the reasons it, that we investigated this issue is because I have had an on and off again problem with video stuttering on my main rig. This is a uh, Ryzen 5 3600. Uh, it's got plenty of RAM. It's got a uh, 1650 video card, G, uh, uh, NVIDIA. And uh, after it runs a while and you're using, you're watching videos in Edge or or Google Chrome, any any Chrome based browser, any browser for that matter. After you like go out and edit a video, or you know, I bring up DaVinci Pro or OBS or something that's had to do with the camera, even Discord. From that point on, after I close those apps, I would get stuttering or herky jerky video in the browsers. And so, uh, we the guys and I over on Discord were trying to figure out what could have made that happen. So that's what that's why i went down this rabbit hole so the hope is is that will stop this uh video issue that i'm having so far so good we'll see because i'm actually recording in obs now and i'm going to be editing this video in davinci here in a bit so hopefully that will fix the problem uh if if so i'll let you know in a, a future video and if if not i'll let you know in a in a future video but that's the reason um i, I had to do this because it was just a reboot would fix it. Even a log out and a log back in would fix it. I tried everything from driver updates to uh, BIOS updates to um, AMD driver updates for the uh, B450 chipset, and it would just always come back and rear its ugly head. Hopefully now it's taken care of for good. So uh, uh, some other events have happened. Uh, I'm sorry this video is so late getting to you, but... Um, for the last couple of weeks, I have had uh, been having some health issues. Nothing, nothing really, really bad. I thought I was having a gallbladder, bladder problem, not bladder. Let me redo that. I thought I was having a gallbladder problem, and uh, so I let it go. And I, I didn't have a fever. I wasn't nauseated. None of that stuff. So I let it go for a while, and then I, uh, my spouse noticed, and and I noticed I was having a burning itching rash broke out on my back underneath my my right lung and i got a little doing a little uh, investigation on the on the interwebs there and 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 uh did a little research on the condition and thinking it was gallbladder and what what they said under gallbladder is sometimes shingles can mimic gallbladder pain because it shingles affects the the root nerves in your in your spine and can mimic pain what you'll get is you get pain under your right rib cage that extends around to the back. So I self-diagnosed as shingles. I called the doctor and said, hey, I want to make an appointment, get looked at, I think I might have shingles. Well, they called me back immediately and said, no, we'd like to see you tomorrow. We'd like to see you as soon as possible because we need to get you on an antiviral medication. So a long story short, went to the doctor. It is shingles. Uh, I've had it for over seven days, but they put me on an antiviral anyway. They've got me on, I'm just taking Motrin for the pain, and, and they've got me on uh, some nerve medication called gabapentin. So hopefully that will stem the tide of this. And um, so those of you that can, go get your 
Make sure if you're over 50, go get your shingles vaccine. But anyway, take care of your health. Don't wait like I did thinking, you know, thinking it'll just go away. Uh, pain is usually a warning that something is wrong. But I'm, I'm, I'm going to live. I know that disappoints a lot of you, but I am going to survive and get through this. And I'll keep you posted as to my progress. Uh, but I'm feeling, you know, pretty good today. In fact, uh, I was able to go a half an hour over my time and didn't notice that I had a lot of severe pain like I've had over the last few days. So there's that. So there you go, YouTube. We hope you found the video entertaining and informative as always. Please give us a thumbs up down below if you liked the video. Leave your comments in the comments section. Subscribe if you're not already a subscriber and click that notification bell to be notified of new videos when they come out. Donate if you're so inclined. PayPal, Patreon, YouTube join function. Or you can just send me some money in the mail. Uh, whatever strikes your fancy. If you go to UncleJoe'sPlayhouse.com, we now have our web, our small website up that points you all to all of our social media accounts. So that way you can come and join us over on Discord, all that good stuff. And I'm I'm looking forward to seeing seeing all of you uh, on my social media accounts as well. So thanks for coming to see us. Come back and see us again. And don't forget, we'll see all of you on the other side.